the big question I want to answer in this video is do we have too many goats? You can never have too many goats. <laughs> Look at his eyes. <laughs> He's trying to suck you. He's just sleeping. Come here, baby. <laughs> he always starts to fall asleep. Such a baby. <laughs> we have 14 goats now. Are you sure that's not too many? No. See? You're being told. <laughs> it's not too many. I wanted Wendy to talk a little bit about each of our goats. I thought it would be fun to do a video where we reintroduce each goat. Since we have so many, it's easy to forget which one's which for people who aren't, you know, around the goats all the time. So in the order in which we got them, Wendy, Tell me a little bit about what makes each goat special. Okay. Come here, Valkyrie. So Valkyrie's my sweet girl. She's my little snuggle bug and usually the one who comes up and puts her head in my lap and likes to have her chin scratched. Um, she does a little bit less of that now that she's got her two little ones, but she's a good girl. She's my princess baby. This is Rogue. She doesn't like to be talked to unless you've got a snack. <laughs> so now I thought we got Rogue first and then decided to get Valkyrie just as a companion goat. Well, we got Rogue and Valkyrie at the same time. Um, and she needs a bath, but she's kind of... What are you doing? <laughs> this is why we have too many goats. Look at you. You'll be in later. <laughs> so Rogue is turning out, out to be a very good mama and she's such a pretty girl and she's got a really nice big structure. She's a she's a little tank and she eats like a tank too. 
she she eats almost as much as indigo if I'd let her. <laughs> yeah, the, the only time she's interested in me is when she thinks I have a snack. Now, Rogue's a first-time freshener. Yes. But we think she has really good genetics, and she's a really beautiful goat. Yeah, she's very pretty. She's got that sort of Swiss markings. So she she's just a big sweetheart, and you can kind of get her to calm down and let you pet her and things like that, but she's not one to just come up to you for no reason. You know, if I've been feeding her treats and things like that, usually she'll come up and get some pets and play and things like that, but mostly she's not the friendliest coat I have. So I guess a lightning bug. His name's Lightning. And he was our first buck and our first little goat that we brought home. So he's, he's a little bit on the shy and quiet side. He definitely gets loud when he has ladies around, but other than that, he's a little, he's not always up at the fence and things like that, like some of the other goats are. Hangs out on his porch and in yep, the stall. Yep, he likes to sit on his porch and sit in the stall underneath the hay and things like that. So then the next goat is Striker, this guy, who... Until we had the bottle baby goats, I would say, was our most affectionate goat. And it took me actually quite a while to get him to learn that he can't just jump, jump right on my lap. In fact, if I sit in there long enough, he'll still want to be in my lap. <laughs> because he's just such a hugger bear. And likes, likes the attention, and he's the talker. So, you know, if you walk by, he'll be right at the fence talking to you the whole time. And he's just a cute boy. <laughs> Striker, what are you doing? <laughs> he's a little demented. <laughs> He's going to be a goofy boy. <laughs> You're going to grow up goofy, aren't ya? Now, Lightning was named before we bought him. Yeah. And then we named Striker to go along with Lightning. Yes, Brian's very proud of the name Striker because he picked it out. <laughs> so... But they're cute boys, for sure. Yeah, and I they really, don't fight too much. They'll do play, they, playful fighting. They do a little playful fighting, and they get a little bit more rambunctious when the girls are kind of in heat and we're bringing them up here and things like that. They'll end up with a little blood where their skirts come off and stuff like that. But really... Explain what skirts are again. It's just the... So... Our goats have all been disputted, which means the, the horns have been burned off um, so that they don't get trapped in a fence or something like that and be without water and die or hang themselves or something like that. So um, when boy goats in particular get disputed, a lot of the times it won't take the full horn and so what will happen is you'll get these little spindly bits, kind of like a fingernail in consistency, like a heavy, heavy fingernail growing through your head. <laughs> so, and they kind of curl up a little bit and do weird things like, like if you grew your fingernails really long. So um, it, it's essentially just remnants of horn that's growing uh, and they do tend to chip off and the girls have them too but they tend not to grow very fast and they tend not to um, get to the point where you can actually see them before they knock them off so uh, boys horns tend to be thicker and bigger come here pretty girl what's in your head So okay, so tell us about Indigo, why we got her in the first place. 
so what kind of goat she is she's a nubian and i got her because i wanted to have milk and she was a doe in milk at the time and i thought it would be good to see how we felt about nubians because i i knew sort of knew i really liked the nigerians and but i wanted to have some experience with a more of a standard sized goat i also was thinking it would be fun to breed the two together <laughs> everybody's chewing on me and so we we brought i brought indigo home in my little honda fit honda fit <laughs> she barely fits in mm. very exciting mm. i have a big big goat in my car <laughs> and she was the first goat we milked here she has always been sort of a trial <laughs> <laughs> Not in this temporary sense, but in a uh, difficult to work with sense. Yes, yes. She's she can be. She's probably our most stubborn and obstinate goat, and she's big. And she's the strongest one. Yeah. So, literally, some days I push her from over there because she doesn't want to go to the milk stand and get milked because she doesn't feel like it right then. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I will push her sideways all the way over there because that's the only way I figured out how to get her to move is to push her from the side because if I try and drag her, she doesn't like being dragged. She likes to have somebody next to her, then she'll move. So I push her sideways and she just sort of goes like this. <laughs> well, look, this is what I do. I take the collar and I push her. <laughs> And she doesn't much care for it when she knows there's nothing happening that she's gonna get. But in the morning, she will acquiesce to moving that way. So she's she's just very stubborn. She's also the funniest goat. Well, most, most personality. personality for it's sure. just a, a favorite, definitely for videos. Yeah, yeah, and. So, once a week, I tell myself, I need to get rid of this goat. <laughs> and once a week, I tell myself, I need another goat like Indigo. <laughs> because she's such a good milker and she's just silly. And Has she been doing a lot of milk lately with, since she just had kids? Yeah, she's she has probably, I wouldn't say doubled her production but it's definitely up by about a third of wow. what it was even last wow. year. So she, she's a really pretty good milker. And that's with her babies milking on her part time. So mm -hmm. she's pretty so, good. So we're hoping that Blue, her little uh, little goat will have good genetics and mm -hmm. might be a good breeding goat to sell to somebody. Yep, yeah. yeah. somebody who wants a little goat, semi little goat who has pretty good milk jeans and he's he's very pretty so I'm hoping that helps too and that somebody might be interested in him but that's indigo silly girl you're small enough that I can pick you up <laughs> so this is Sienna and she was born this February to Valkyrie and she's just a sweet girl who's getting bigger and we're hoping that, that she has taken some good things from her daddy and from her mommy and will be a good goat for us. Sienna she's, is also one of our prettiest goats, I think. She's so pretty. Yes, I just love to look at her. She's got really beautiful markings. She's a, been a little bit standoffish since all these other goats arrived. I think she was sort of the favorite before yep. we had all yep. these babies and so she's been kind of grouchy lately <laughs> because she's not getting as much attention as she used to unfortunately I try to when I put the other goats in their respective areas at night to be separated and whatnot I try to spend a little time with her right now but I think 
a little bit standoffish because she's not the center of attention like she used to be. Sienna was the very first goat born here. The great story behind that, you'll have to watch the video, we'll put a little link. Next is her brother. Come here, baby. You're too big. You're way too big. But I'll pick you up for a second. <laughs> this chubby boy here. He's so chubby. He eats all day. He's very chubby. And here's so. an example of the skur that has come off. Yeah. And it's starting to grow again here. Yep. So you're lopsided right now, dude. Yep. He's got one, one side has just a little skur and the other one has a much bigger one. Stormtrooper is a weather, which means he's been castrated. And he's going to be, I need to put him up on Craigslist soon because he's, he's going to be a pet goat for somebody. So he will, assuming somebody wants to buy him, he is really cute and sweet. He will be a very, very good pet goat because he, if I sit down, he will probably be the first goat. And <laughs> say hello. Except that they're all excited right now because we're out here. Come here, baby. Who's my boy? Hmm? Yeah, usually he's the first one. All of our goats have gotten an incredible amount of personal attention. They've been spoiled. Yes. Spoiled with attention. Hmm. You're not spoiled, are you? You're just so sweet. <laughs> okay, so next we have our little bottle baby goats. They are Kiko Nigerian Boar Crosses. I'm not sure and what Nubian. percentage. Didn't, no. What did I say? Kiko Boar Nigerian. Oh, not Nigerian. Nubian. Kiko Boar Nubian crosses. They are more of a meat goat than anything else. And we we got them from a lady who was selling all three because they're bottle babies and she didn't want to take care of them. They're kind of a pain in the butt <laughs> because you have to feed them so many times a day and things like that. But I'm really kind of enjoying having them and not minding feeding them every day and things like that. It's a little easier now that it's twice a day and not three times a day. Three times a day, three or four times a day at one point was kind of a lot when they first came here, but no, they're doing really good. So we have, this one is Oscar right here. And then this one is Frank. And this one is Dijon or DJ is what we call him. So, Oscar, Frank, DJ. Explain why they're meat goats rather than breeding goats. Why why not keep them as breeding goats? It, it's, or even companion goats. Well, they could be a companion goat, but they're going to be pretty large and they're boys. I've been kind of wanting to experiment with the idea of raising meat goats. Most of the world eats goat meat. It's us in the USA that is a little bit strange and not eating it. And people have told me that it's actually really good and I'm just kind of wanting to get into that side because I do enjoy raising these animals and things like that and so making it more of a sustainable thing for our homestead by having it be a little bit more dual purpose. The, the thing we're thinking about doing is having a goat to crossbreed with indigo, our big Nubian goat, and see if we couldn't have goats come out of her that then we get her milk and then we have goats that we can raise up for meat goats. The meat goats have the genetics to be a larger, larger goat, so more meat. And they're not 
thoroughbred by any means. Mm -hmm. They don't have proven milk lines mm -hmm. by any means. So they're inexpensive. Yeah. And just basically good for meat. You know, it's, that's what their, their purpose really is. I, I think the hard thing will be that, you know, basically hand feeding these goats, then putting them in the freezer is a little bit, gonna be a little bit rough because they are kind of adorable and silly and, you know, so, but we knew what they were going to be when we got them. And so I think you kind of keep telling yourself yeah. that this is, yeah the reality so now you're thinking at this point that we're not going to be actually slaughtering these goats ourselves right no i'm looking into a butcher shop that we would take them to and then they would slaughter them and package them up for us and i think that would be a lot better and then i, I need to figure out how it works but i'm thinking what i'll end up doing is raising them up to the the weight that would be appropriate which is about 50 to 75 pounds is what I'm thinking and then I will get an estimate from the butcher to do a USDA labeling on two of them and then have those labels will allow us to be able to sell that and I'll know about how, that, how much that would cost and so I can put them on Craigslist at that point and say hey if you would like to buy a share this is what the cost will be and that, that way we could sell like a half a share or something like that of the goats and figure that out because somebody may not want Quite so much but 50 pounds is like a box of meat so it's, it's more likely that somebody will want to buy a whole one but yeah because you know people who came here from somewhere else tend to like to eat the, the types of foods that they grew up with and will we'll probably be having a hard time finding that kind of product here so Hopefully it will be something where I can start getting relationships with people who want to have that kind of product and I can have customers then that we can sell these goats to and that would be a good deal for us. Um, because then I get to enjoy raising them and then somebody else gets to have yeah. something that's not easily ob obtained. We recently moved our three little bottle baby goats over here with the bucks. We did it earlier than we thought we were going to. The plan was to raise these little goats with the girls for the first part of their lives, but they just escaped from that pen too easily. So we've got them over here now where it's, they're a little more secure. Mm -hmm. And I'm really enjoying having them here because they are so affectionate. And whenever I'm coming up to take care of the chickens, they're just coming right up to the fence and saying hello. It's it's just really enjoyable. It's really enjoyable. Very rewarding to have bottle baby goats. So this big boy is blue. Who's gonna be so big? That's the Nubian half that's gonna make him big. Yeah, so he's got the big Nubian silly ears and the big Nubian silly personality. <laughs> and he's really big framed. So, and he's got beautiful coloring and come here baby come on and he's got really really dairy skin I mean his skin is just so loosey goosey and he's just so sweet and silly blue has got to be our softest goat it's just yeah. just the fur is just unbelievably a, soft he has a thicker coat from the Nigerian side. I think it's very interesting and he's got this silvery color which is really pretty. This sort of bluing type color where it's a little bit gray, a little bit brown in his coat and it's frosting so 
I think if, if he could get shaved, he would have more white underneath all that, which is really interesting. Still, you can see underneath, he's a lot lighter. At the, it's darker at the tips. He's just a really pretty boy. He's so pretty. Aren't you? With your black boots. And he's just a funny boy. He's really cute. I've decided not to um, castrate him to try and sell him as a F1 hybrid, which is his Nubian on one side and the Nigerian Dwarf on another side. So I will register him with the ADGA. I think they register him as an American breed. And then if somebody wants to transfer that to the, the I forget what the other association is. There's an association that deals with miniature breeds. And so that way they should be able to do that transfer, I think then because he will have authentic parents from both, both sides and we'll do a DNA test with him as well so that yeah. we'll know when, what his father is for sure and things like that. And then the next goat is this bouncy girl who is Ginger. And Ginger's favorite hobby right now is chewing on me. Mostly my shirts and my dresses. She likes to chew on my, when I wear skirts. She, I will be thinking that I can just walk forward, but the goat will have eaten half of my back end here. Won't she? Won't she? Yes, because she's so silly. She just wants her attention. She's so silly. <laughs> she will eat half of my skirt, and I'll be going to walk forward and nearly fall down because this little goat has half of it in her mouth, but she's very silly, and she likes attention right now. She's been jumping in my lap a lot. So she's getting to be a very affectionate goat, yeah. just like her mama. Blue and Ginger both have really excellent genetics. We, yeah. know, we know the milk line is really good through indigo, as well as through the, the father, whichever father it is. Yeah. I, I'm kind of leaning towards Stryker just because of some of the coloring. That's mostly based on coloring, which could be completely off. Uh, so we'll do a DNA test to be sure. And actually, I'm not really minding too much doing the DNA tests for the goats because I think that will actually be an easy way for us to make sure goats are bred is if we have two Nigerians and maybe we have another goat, we can put one half of the goats in one area and one half of them in another area. And then we know nobody's going to get bred by a goat that's too big for them or anything like that because they're separated far enough. We can keep track of the father a little bit more officially with the genetics, I think. So Blue and Ginger were the third and fourth goats born here. The second round of goat births was very different from the first. What do you want to say about that, Wendy? Rogue and, and Indigo very considerately had their babies during the day. <laughs> And it wasn't during some major act of God nature event <laughs> in the middle of the night. So I appreciated that. And I was very glad, especially for Rogue, that we had had a horrible heat wave the week before. And I was really worried that she was going to go into early labor because of it or something bad was going to happen. And I was worried up until she had her babies that something might be wrong with one of them because of all the heat. It, it was 115 degrees, so it was really, really hot. And she is by far the most chunky of our goats. <laughs> and she has really thick fur. And I, I debated on whether or not I should actually shave her, but she was so close to term, I didn't want to traumatize her because she would get really upset so I decided not to do that and I'm glad I didn't now because I think it worked out I just went and I was going all day dumping buckets of water on her and I think that was fine that was enough so she did good before we talk about the next goats blue and ginger 
are becoming quite quite a bit more affectionate than they used to be. They were pretty standoffish. But as the goats get bigger, they get a little more friendly and curious and they're jumping up on us and chewing on your shirt. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so why would we want to sell blue rather than keep blue as a breeding buck for ourselves if he's potentially such a valuable breeding buck? Well, because he is part Nubian, the only goat I could breed him to would be another Nubian or a smaller goat, or a, not a smaller goat, or a other part Nubian. So I can't breed him to his sister, I can't breed him to his mother, so I don't have another goat to breed him to. I would much rather him go to somebody who has another Nubian or another part Nubian like like Ginger who isn't related that would like to introduce some interesting milk lines into their herd so he he won't be able to stay here because of that so after blue and ginger we have rogues kids the littlest goats here yep. Bonnie and Clyde we think Bonnie was born first, at least I do. Bonnie was up and moving around a lot f sooner than Clyde was, so we think she was born first. Yep. It was kind of a surprise. They uh, they were just born before we even noticed it. We came yeah. out and there were, there were goat babies. Yeah, I had been checking on Rogue about every hour, hour and a half, and she, I had come out here, she looked fine. She, nothing seems seemed to be happening. There was no, you know, like drool out of her butt or anything like that. And then Brian came home probably an hour later and said, there's baby goats out in the yard. <laughs> when did that happen? And I was like, what? And so we ran out and yep, there were baby goats out here. She's definitely a jumping goat because she just bounces around and when, when I let her out in the morning, she just bounces everywhere. And it was very funny. She does get picked on by some of the other goats, though. Yep. <laughs> Hi. You're a pit squeak, aren't you? That's a pretty girl. And she's so cute because she just looks like Rogue. So it's like a little Rogue. Aren't ya? You just look a little Rogue. <laughs> little tiny Rogy. So this is Clyde. And he was the last goat born this year. And he's very cute. And I'm pretty convinced that he's Strikers. <laughs> son because he just looks so much like Stryker. It's funny because it's just funny that that we have a little Bonnie who looks just like Rogue and little Clyde that looks just like Stryker. I could be wrong though. And he's a bit more of a quiet goat. He likes to sit in the corner and kind of watch things happen and but he's a big boy for being a little nigerian he's definitely started to put on more weight just since he's been born he's a big sweetie and i just love this little tuft on his head <laughs> okay can you go see my mom We're gonna keep Ginger, because I don't think we talked about keeping Ginger. Oh. Well, you keep saying we're gonna keep Ginger. So. Do, you do you think we're going to? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Do we have too many goats? Is that the question? No, we don't have too many goats. But we can't keep all the goats and have more goats. <laughs> I think for Bonnie and Clyde, I'd like to see what Bonnie's temperament is a little bit more and also see how Rogue is for milking and then we'll decide then what to do with each of them if we're going to 
keep Bonnie or not keep Bonnie and then we'll decide whether or not to have Clyde either be a weather or to try and sell him as a once we know what Rogue is doing as far yep. as milk yep yep she does have a really big udder so that's promising we'll see if she actually lets me milk her once she gets some time on the milk stand and things like that right now we're letting the her kids just feed off of mm -hmm. her rather than yep. take milk yep. for ourselves yeah they're they're about a week old now and so i'll wait until they're at least two weeks old before i start separating them at night and then you know we'll we'll see from there so do you have some favorites or a favorite i don't know i i like them all for different sorts of reasons probably probably if i were just going on personality in terms of calm snuggliness then i would say valkyrie and sienna are my favorites because they're just very sweet and kind of let you pet on them and aren't too in your face and things like that um well sienna was until she got kind of grumpy <laughs> Uh, if we're talking about entertainment value, then Indigo. Indigo, definitely. Although Ginger is definitely turning out to be just as silly as her mother. So that's It'll promising. be fun to watch. Fun to watch grow up. We'll yes, see. Yes, because she is just really funny. And she will follow me like if, with my skirt, with a little bit of the skirt in my in her mouth. And she will walk exactly at the feet. <laughs> So that she can just keep chewing at me, which I think is really funny. <laughs> Cause you're silly. Yes, and she she does this thing that her mom does, which is put her head right there and look up at me, which I think is adorable. Yes, you're just cute with your big floppy ears. Yes, your babies are cute.